Hi, so for today, we're going to talk about electrical circuits and more specifically, we'll be dealing with DC circuits or the direct current electrical circuits. So this is an introduction uh, topic all about electrical circuits. So in this video, we'll be talking about what is a voltage, charge, current, power, energy. So let's get started. Okay, what is an electrical circuit? Electric circuit is an interconnection of electrical elements, okay? and provides a complete path for the current. So that is basically the meaning of electric circuit. You have many electrical elements, and you're going to connect those electrical elements, and you're going to provide a complete path for the current to flow. Okay? If the, the path is not complete, okay, meaning there is a uh, open in the wire, okay, so that is not an electrical circuit. So consider this example. This is a simple electric circuit wherein we have the battery. Okay, so that's that provides the source for our lamp here. Okay, and we have the wires here. So hence, if we are going to connect one side of the wire on the positive terminal of the battery and one side of the wire on the negative terminal of the battery, what happens is that by conventional current flow, later on we'll be discussing that, by conventional current flow, the, the current flows from the positive direction and lights up the lamp and go back to the negative terminal of the battery. So hence, this path from the battery to the lamp and back again to the battery, it's a complete path. Okay, That is where the current flows here, here in the wire. Okay, So interconnection of electrical elements, we have the battery and in this case, we have also the lamp. So without the connection via wire of the battery and the lamp, that is not an electrical circuit. So in order for you to have an electrical circuit, you must have an interconnection of electrical elements and provided that it also provides a complete path for the current. Okay, so it consists of three basic elements, battery, wires, and the lamps. So what are the basic parts of the circuit? Number one, we have the source. Provides energy in the circuit. So without the source, there will be no current in our circuit because the source from the word itself provides energy in the circuit. So for number two, we have wires and conductors. So these are the ones who interconnect the elements in the circuits. So in other words, they connect elements in the circuit, a connection between the battery and a connection between the lamp. Okay, for example, a while ago, that's a basic circuit. And the wires and the conductors actually connect the elements in the circuits. They are also known as the carriers of the energy, right? Load. So the load is the part of the circuit that converts one form of energy to another form of energy. If we're going to go back to our example a while ago, uh, the electrical energy converts, okay, is being converted to light energy in the lamp, okay? So here, because of the source of the electrical energy provided by the battery, okay, so it lights up the lamp. So in this example, we can say that the lamp is considered as the load because it basically converts the electrical energy into some form of energy, which is the light energy. Okay. So number four, we have the switch. Okay. The part of the circuit that can alter the current. Okay. In, in our example, we don't have any switch there, but switch always performs okay, the, the on and off function of a circuit. Imagine, if you're going to use your light, okay, if it doesn't have a switch, it would be continuously open, okay, and you will, waste, you will be wasting your, your energy, okay, your, the power that is being uh, dissipated by that uh, light if you're not using that light for a certain moment of time. So, switch is very important in the circuit, wherein it alters the current, okay, it can switch on and switch off the uh, circuit okay so that when it is not used there's there will be no waste of energy okay so here are four basic parts for circuits so as a units it's important for us to actually uh, recall our system of international units so these are international measurement language that is basically composed of seven principal units so in our discussion we will be using current Okay, the basic unit of current is ampere, denoted by big letter A. Okay, and charge, of course. The unit is Coulomb, named after uh, 
Colum, okay? Uh, Charles Augustin de Colum, uh, by by the symbol big letter C, and of course we have the time here second. So meter, okay? We will be using that for a certain time, okay? But not really often times. So what are we going to try to familiarize ourselves is the electric current, the time, of course the charge, and sometimes uh, the temperature, the length, okay? So, SI units, so it's important also for us to actually memorize or familiarize ourselves in the prefix and symbols of the SI units. So, in circuits, in dealing with circuits, usually the currents are in terms of milli, that is 10 times raised to negative 3, denoted by M, okay? So, for example, if you have seen a current that is MA, 10 MA, that is 10 milliamperes, 1 MA, that is 1 milliamperes. So, it corresponds to 1 times 10 raised to negative 3. If it is 10 milliamperes, 10 times 10 raised to negative 3, okay? In terms of milli, in terms of micro, that is 10 times raised to negative 6, okay? 10 raised to negative 6, it has a symbol of mu, okay, in uh, our discussion. So, 10 times raised to negative 9, okay, is nano, denoted by N. So, if you have seen 1 Na, that is 1 nano amperes. Okay, and sometimes, we could also use pico, 10 times, uh, 10 raised to negative 12, denoted by the small case letter P. And also, if we have used this mini, micro, nano, and pico, we will be also using kilo, okay? For for example, in terms of resistor, those resistors are rated as kilo ohms, where ohms is the unit of resistor. So 10 kilo ohms, 3 kilo ohm, 1 kilo ohm, and sometimes our resistors could be as large as mega. That is 10 raised to 6. Okay, so if you have if you've seen uh let's say 1m the ohm sign, okay, which later on we will be discussing, that corresponds to on 1 million ohm. Okay? So, you have to familiarize yourself with this. And be careful because some of the students are actually uh, having a uh, wrong answer because they are not including the multiplier in the computation of their uh, solving. Okay? So, let's go now to charge and current. The most basic quantity in electrical circuit is the electric charge. Almost in every, in every uh, object, there is a charge. What is this electrical charge? It, it is an electrical property of the atomic particles, which matter consists. So as we all know, we have the positive charge and the negative charge. In terms of atom, we have the proton and the electron. So these charges are usually measured in columns, okay? Coulomb, okay, denoted by big letter C. It should be noted that the charge of an electron is negative, okay? So, the charge of an electron is negative, the charge of the proton is positive. We can always uh, quantify what is the charge of the proton and the electron. So, the charge of the proton and electron, they have equal magnitude. When we say magnitude, it's always a positive quantity, okay? But, uh, uh, in terms of sign, okay, for proton, we have 1.602 times 10 raised to negative 19 Coulomb. And for electron, it should be noted negative 1.602 times 10 raised to negative 19 Coulomb. Okay? And again, it should be noted that the magnitude of the charge of an electron and proton is still the same. That is 1.602 times 10 raised to negative 19 Coulomb. Okay? The proton carries a positive charge of the same magnitude as the electron. Okay? They, they, they have the same charge. Okay? Magnitude of charge. Okay. So, <clears throat> the following point should be noted about electric charge. So, the Coulomb is a very large unit for charges. So, oftentimes, you will be dealing with nanocoulomb, picocoulomb, microcoulomb, if you have encountered this in your physics. So, the, the charges are usually in nanocoulomb, picocoulomb, okay, microcoulomb. Because the unit of one coulomb is a very large amount of charge. So, in fact, there are what? 6 in, in a charge of, uh, uh, of 1.602 times 10 raised to negative 19 Coulomb, there are about 6.24 times 10 raised to 18 electrons. That's a huge amount of electrons. And if we're going to compute, right, 
uh, the charges for a five coulomb. No, that this is this is times five of this given uh, number of electrons here. Okay, so one coulomb of charge is equal to this number of electrons. Very large amount of electrons. So one coulomb of charge is really a large amount of coulomb. Thus, realistic values are in terms of just what I have said a while ago. In terms of micro, nano, and pico coulomb. Number two. The only charges that occur in nature are integral multiples of the charge of the electron. Okay, occurring uh, charges are in the multiple, integral multiples only of the charge of the electron, which is 6.24 times 10 raised to 18 electrons. And the law of conservation of charge states that charge can neither be created nor destroyed. It can be only transferred okay, from one object to another object. Thus, the algebraic sum of electric charges in a system that does not change, does not change, okay? It's always uh, equal to zero. So, in other words, the, the, if charges are being transferred from one uh, object to another object, so the object that loses the charge, okay, loses some electrons, is equal to the amount of electrons gained by the other object and vice versa, okay? So, when a conducting wire is conducted or connected to a battery, the charges are compelled to move. Okay? So because the battery is the source, and in order for the charges to move, you must have a force that is actually uh, will push the electrons from one place to another. So the motion of charges creates what we know as the electric current. An electric current is defined as the movement of charge per unit of time. How much charge passes through a certain area per unit of time? So electric current is the prime rate okay, of change of charge measured in amperes, letter A, okay? That's the unit of electric current, amperes, or simply the charge per unit time. If we are going to put it mathematically, we're going to see later, again, the formula for current. So as you can see here, we have a battery here, this is a schematic symbol for a battery. This is the positive source side and the negative source side. And we have a wire here. So if we connect a battery to a certain uh, wire, the charges are compelled to move. And that movement produces an electric current. And we have two conventional or, or we have two types of current flow. It is often useful okay, in, in many books as the conventional current flow. And what is the conventional current flow? Conventional current flow states that uh, to take the movement of current flow as the movement of positive charges. Or in other words, conventional current flow is the movement of current from the positive terminal to the negative terminal of the body. Hence, we have the current that is in this direction. Okay? So that is actually the conventional current flow. And the second one is the electron flow. Electron flow is, is what? It is the real flow of currents. So if conventional current flow is from positive to negative, electron flow is from negative to positive. Conventional current flow is used because according to uh, them, it's much easier to analyze Okay, uh, conventional when using conventional current flow. It's much easier to analyze circuits in conventional current flow. So again, we have the electron flow and the conventional current flow. So, the relationship between the ch current, charge, and time T is, is that current is equal to dQ over dT. Okay? Differential unit of charge per differential uh, unit of time, dQ over dT. So, if we're going to cross-multiply this such that our equation will be I dT is equal to dQ, Integrating both sides of the equation, you will have a result of uh, letter Q here, which denotes the charge, and the integral of I dt from t sub 0 to time t, from the initial time to the final time, wherein you can get the charge. Okay, So, types of current, we have the direct current and the alternating current. So, direct current for, uh, for our topic here in introduction of electrical circuits will be dealing with DC. Okay? So, direct current is a current that remains constant with time. By convention, it has a symbol, big letter I, to denote such a constant current. Okay? So, the direct current, in other words, if we're going to plot it into our, our x and y axis such that x is in terms of time 
and y is in, in, in terms of current, okay, the red current does not change its uh, uh, current regularly. Unlike alternating current, it is a type of current that varies sinusoidally with time. As you can see here, okay, it's a sine wave or if we log it 90 degrees, that is cosine wave. By convention, has a symbol, uh, uh, lowercase letter i. So, direct current, it remains constant with time, while alternating, while alternating current varies sinusoidally with time. But in our discussion, for circuits 1, for direct current circuits, we'll be dealing always with DC current source, okay, or DC voltage source. So, current can be expressed in terms of negative. Know that if current has a negative value, it only means that the current reversed its direction. Such that if we have a 5 amperes going in this direction, if we negate that current, the direction of the current only changes if we negate the current. Okay? So, current is a scalar quantity. Okay? So, scalar quantity. So, if we ne ne negate this current, that would uh, change its direction. So, let's try to have a quick check here by answering this problem. Okay? Let me just copy it. For us to be able to check if we have learned something. Okay, so let's start here. Quick check. How much charge is represented by 4,000, oops, by 4,600 electrons? So how do we answer that problem? Okay, so we have 4,600 electrons. Let's say, if we're going to recall back our study a while ago, that one electron is equal to 6.24 times 10 raised to 18. So, if uh, one, one column of charge. So, if this is electron, <coughs> and I have here 6.24 times 10 raised to 18 electrons, okay? That is equivalent to one charge, one column of charge. So, you can see that electrons would actually cancel. And you will be arriving at an answer of, let's try this again, 4,600 over 6.24 times 10 raised to 18. That is 7, okay? 7.37, okay? Or 0.30, let's say 0.36. Or 0.37, that's okay, okay? times 10 raised to negative 16 column, okay? And it is actually electrons, so we have a negative here, okay? So that's a negative right there. So, number two, we have, we have to put negative because it's electrons, okay? Calculate the amount of charge press represented by 4 millions of proton. So we have 4 millions of proton. So 4 times 10 raised to 6 Proton, okay, multiplied again by one coulomb of charge. This is negative, okay, since this is proton, 6.24 times 10 raised to 18 protons also. So this is negative because it's actually electron. I just forgot to put negative. So what will happen here? Again, our answer should be 4 times 10 raised to 6, 6.24 times 10 raised to 18. That is 6.24. Okay, 6.41 or 4.08, let's say 41 times 10 raised to negative 13 uh, column of charge. That's a positive charge because it's proton, okay? So, for number 3, the total charge entering a terminal, okay? The total charge entering a terminal is given by Q is equals to 5T sine 4 pi, okay, t milli coulomb, okay? So be very careful, it has a milli coulomb that's, uh, it actually states that, that this is multiplied by times 10 raised to negative 3 coulomb. So calculate the current at 0 0.5 seconds. The current at 0 0.5 seconds is how many? So according to our formula, we have a formula of I is equal to dq over dt. Okay, 
So, this is, here is our Q. So, we have to get the derivative of dQ over dt. Or the derivative of Q over t with respect to t. So, if we get that, we will be having what? We will be having... So, it, if we take the derivative of 5t sine 4 pi t, remember that this is in terms of product rule. So, what are we going to do first is to copy the first uh, term. We have 5t that is multiplied by the derivative of the second term, which is sine 4 pi t. So, if you get the derivative of that, okay? So, derivative first of this inner sine function with respect to t, that is 4 pi, okay? multiplied by the derivative of sine 4 pi t that is cosine 4 pi t plus that is a product rule plus we have to get this copy that sine 4 pi t and uh, get the derivative of 5t which is simply what the 5 okay so if we're going to uh, uh, simplify this that is 20 pi t cos sine of 4 pi t plus 5 sine 4 pi t. Okay, this, uh, this is our dq over dt. And applying, multi, uh, applying or substituting t is equal to 0 0.5 in our equation, that should be our current. And remember, if you are doing, if you are, if you are having a trig function together with pi in it, make sure that your calculator is in radian mode. Okay? So we have so we have 20 pi times 0 0.5 cosine 4 pi times 0 0.5 plus 5 sine 4 pi times 0 0.5. Make sure you are in radian. Okay? Make sure radian mode in your calculator. Okay? So, what will happen? The current here will be 31.42. Okay? And remember that this whole Q is millicoulombs. So, this is also milliampere. Okay? The unit of current is again is ampere. Okay? So, we use the definition of current dq over dt in order for us to get the current at 0.5 seconds okay and again let's try another one for number four we shall copy this okay so the total charge entering a terminal by q is given by we have 10 minus 10 e raised to negative 2t calculate the current at five seconds so that is still the same we are asked for current and our definition for current is dq over dt or d small q over dt it's okay okay so we're going to get dq with respect to t derivative of q with respect to t so we all know that this would be zero minus okay 10 e raised to negative 2t multiplied by negative 2 okay, if we get the derivative of this negative 10 times negative 2 okay that would be 20 e raised to negative 2t. Okay? That's the derivative of dq over dt. So, you must recall also your derivatives in here. So, if you get the current, that should be 20 e raised to negative 2 times 0 0.5, okay, milliamperes. Because, as you can see, that is millicoulomb in here. So, whatever the result of this should be milliamperes. Because it's it's multiplied by times 10 raised to negative 3. So 20 E uh, raised to negative. Let's check if our answer is correct. Okay, so that is 7.36. 7.36 milliamperes. Okay, let's try so, to solve another problem. So this is number 5, this is number 6. Okay. Determine the total charge entering a terminal between time is equal to 1 second and time is equal to 2 seconds if the current passing the terminal is I is equal to 3T squared minus T amperes. 
So for number 5, by the way, this is number 5 already. So we have I that is equivalent to 3T squared minus T amperes. Okay? And we have T naught, which is the initial time, which is 1 second. We have final time is 2 seconds. We're going to find the charge. What is the charge? For our formula, from our formula, we have dq over dt. If we cross multiply this, dq is equal to i dt. If we integrate both sides of our equation, we'll be having q is equal to integral of i dt, of which we are given of t naught and t here. So what are we going to do? Integrate. So we have q is equal to the integral of i, which is 3t squared minus t amperes dt from 1 to 2 seconds. That is the charge. Okay? So, if we integrate that, okay, we can have this 3t squared from 1 to 2 minus integral of 1 to 2 of t from 1 to 2 both in dt. This should have a dt in here. Okay? So, if we integrate that, simply q would be 3 t cube over 3, okay, evaluated from 1 to 2, minus, of course, we have, what? t squared over 2, evaluated from 1 to 2. You can use calculator in here, because you're already graduated with integral, okay? So, what will happen here? We have q, okay, if you calculate this, the integral of uh, 3 t squared minus t from 1 to 2, that should result to, what, 5.5 Coulomb. So, upon simplifying, again, this, evaluating the uh, limits from 1 to 2, you should get 5.5 Coulomb. Okay? So, for next problem, for number 5, okay, the current flowing through an element is, in piecewise function, function. So, we have a condition. 2 amperes if 0 is less than t and t is less than 1. And 2 t squared amperes if t is greater than 1. It says calculate the charge entering from time is equal to 0 to time is equal to 2. So, how do we do this? So, of course, okay, we have to have <coughs> what? I is now equal to, again, we are going to calculate for the charge, okay? So, if charge is being calculated in here, we shall be using again the formula dq is equal to i dt. But i, we are given with a certain condition. So, it says calculate the charge from 0 to 2. So, dq, okay? I'm going to write i for 2 amperes dt, that is my i, from 0 to 1. So, from 0 to 1. Okay? That is my current here. And again, I'm going to add it at the integral of the other function, 2t squared amperes, if t is greater than 1. Our condition is from 0 to 2. So, whatever uh, upper the upper limit here would be my lower limit here, and from 2, or from 1 to 2. Okay? That should be our uh, limit for this integral. So, hence... We're going to calculate dq here. So, that is simply 2 times 1 minus 0. Plus, this is simply 2 t cube over 3. Okay? Evaluated from 1 to 2. So, if we get, this should be now integrated also. So, this should be q now. Or the small letter q to denote that this is a charge. So, you can also calculate it in your calculator. If you calculate it, that should be 6 point. 66 7 columns of charge. So again, this is a piecewise condition or piecewise function. So you're going to uh, consider the condition given by the piecewise function in order for you to calculate the charge. So that points that that should be 6.667 okay column of charge. Okay, let's continue our discussion going back here at the PowerPoint. Okay. So, we're done with some examples of calculating the charge and current. 
given some certain conditions. And now we're ready to move on with the voltage. What is a voltage? Voltage is actually the energy required to move an electric charge through an element. Voltage is also known the electro is as electromagnetic, uh, electromotive force or EMF, or what we call the potential difference. Here, as we can see here, we have from terminal A and B, we have a positive terminal of the voltage here and a negative terminal of the voltage here. We say that through this element, okay, there is a 9 volt voltage drop from A to B. So from higher potential always to the lower potential. So from voltage drop from A to B. In this case, we have reversed the polarity of the, the source of, of which terminal B has now the positive and terminal A has now the negative. So we say that there is a 9 volt voltage rise from B to A because it is always from the higher potential to the lower potential. And 9 voltage rise because it rises from point B to A. So again, the voltage is the energy required to move an electric charge. If there is no voltage, then definitely there will be no current. Okay? So there will be no cost of the movement of current. Okay? This is the cause why there is an electric current. That is the voltage. And without the cost, there is no effect of which the effect is the current. Okay? So its unit is named up after the... Uh, Alessandro Volta, okay, which is which is volts, okay. So power and energy, okay. Power is the time rate of expending or absorbing energy. It is measured in watts. So mathematically, we can have the formula for power as P is equals to the change in uh, energy with respect to change some change in time, or P is equals to V I. But there are many. Uh, there are many formulas for uh, electric current or electric current for power, electrical power. So we have P is equals to dW, change of energy with respect to time. We have VI, we have V squared over R if we have a resistor and we have I squared R. So W here is the energy in joules, okay, denoted by big letter J. Time here is, uh, T here is time in seconds, okay? It can be also in hours, okay? So, V here is the voltage in terms of volts. I here is the current. R here is the resistance, okay? So, the unit of power, unit of power is in terms of watts, okay? Power is in terms of watts. W, big W, that is watts. Okay? So, that is the definition of power. Okay. So, there is what we call the absorbing power and supplying power. <clears throat> so, here we have the case of absorbing and supplying power. If the current leaves the positive terminal, okay, leaves the positive terminal of this voltage source, then that is absorbing power. If we have a supplying power if and only if the current leaves the negative terminal, okay? Leaves the terminal or enters the negative terminal. So what happens here, we have a 3 ampere here. The current is in this direction. So this is the polarity of the voltage as well as the element's polarity which should be positive and negative. So if the current enters the positive element, okay, the positive terminal of the element, that is a positive power. That is absorbing power. Okay, this is the same also in this image. So, we know that current current here, the amperes, is, originates from here. Okay, from here. So, it enters, it reverses the, the uh, now, the, the polarity, 4 volts, reverses its polarity. We're in negative here, and we have positive here. So, the 3 amperes entering here, the polarity of this element is also positive and negative. Hence, this is still an absorbing power. So if current enters the positive terminal, that is an absorbing power, and we have a power that is positive. For supplying power, it's different. If the current enters through the negative, we all know that by inspection, the current flows from the, the uh, uh, higher potential to the lower potential. So what happens here is that if these three amperes enters the negative, that is a supplying power. So in this case, this is still the same, right? So in other words, we have the 
absorbing power and supplying power and of course the power absorbed is equal to the uh, to the power supplied hence if we're going to get the total power in a circuit that is equivalent to zero so energy is the capacity to do work measured in joules Okay, the electric power utility companies measure energy in watt hours. Okay, and one watt hour is equivalent to 3,600 joules. Okay, so in order for us to get the energy, also we can use these formulas wherein we have the energy is equal to the integral of the power uh, dt evaluated from time t sub zero to t, or we can replace this power by simply vi because power is equal to v. I and then evaluated the evaluating the integral we shall get the energy okay so let's try to solve some problems again okay so an energy source forces a constant current of two amperes from let's let's just copy first I'm just just going to copy first okay before we answer okay so an energy source forces a constant current of 2 amperes for a 10 seconds to flow through a light bulb. If 2.3 kilojoules is given off in the form of light and heat energy, calculate the voltage drop across the bulb. So at first, we need to we need to identify the given. Okay? So we have I is equal to 2 amperes. We have time is equal to 10 seconds. And we have an energy okay, that is 2.3 kilojoules or 2.3 times 10 raised to 3 joules. That's what kilo means. Okay? So, calculate the voltage drop. We know that the formula for energy, okay, for power is energy over time. Okay? DW over D, DT. And we also know that P is actually VI. So, we have the time. 10 seconds, we have the energy, we have the current, so we can solve for the voltage drop. Okay? So that is simply W over Ti. So if you calculate that, 2.3 kilojoules, don't forget the times 10 raised to 3 here, okay? Over 10 seconds multiplied by I, which is 2 amperes, that should equivalent to 115 volts. Let me just check if we have the correct answer. Okay? So, we have 115 volts. <clears throat> okay, let's try another one. Problem. Let's try another problem here. So, we have for number 2. Okay. So, for number 2, let's paste it here. To move a charge Q from point A to point B requires negative 30 joules. Find the voltage drop B, A, B if, if A, Q is equal to 2 column and B, if Q is equal to negative 6 column. So there is a formula also of the voltage wherein voltage is equivalent to the energy over the charge. So we have an energy that is equivalent to negative 30 joules. Okay? For solution A, we must apply this formula, voltage is equal to the energy, negative 30 joules, over the charge Q, which is 2 column, and it's evidently that is negative 15 volts. Okay? For letter B, we have voltage equivalent to negative 30 joules over 5, uh, negative 6 column. Okay? So, negative divided by negative, that's a positive. So, 30 divided by 6, that is 5 volts. So that is for our number two. So let's go now for number uh, three. Okay, let's try to solve number three. So this is number three. Find the power delivered to an element at time is equal to three milliseconds if the current entering its positive terminal is I is equal to five cosine sixty pi t amperes and the voltage is three I. So find the power. Okay, so the power has a formula based on our given. We have V and I, and V now is equal to three times the current. But current in our given is five cosine sixty pi t amperes, and it says that the voltage is thrice the current. 
So if we multiply 3 here, this should become 15 cosine 60 pi t volts. And our formula for power is this, V times I. So if you multiply V and I, we have 15 cosine 60 pi t volts multiplied by 5 cosine 60 pi t amperes. So if you multiply that, okay, we have what? We have 75 cosine squared 60 pi t, okay, watts. So this expression could also be written as 75, okay, cosine of 60 pi t squared so that you could be able to put it in your calculator. And again, find the power delivered to an element at time is equal to 3 milliseconds. So what will we do is simply substitute the value of the time in here. 3 milliseconds is 3 times 10 raised to negative 3 seconds. So squared watts. So if you are going to enter this in our calculator, and again, you must be in region mode. If you calculate this, because we have a cosine and pi here. So the power should be 53.47 watts. Okay? So that should be the power delivered to an element at time is equals to 3 milliseconds. So for number 4, let's try to solve a very easy problem again. How much energy does... A 100 watt electric bulb consume in 2 hours. How much energy? Okay, we know that the formula, again, of power is energy divided by time. So if we get energy, we have P times time. And we have a power of 100 watts. So we have 2 hours here. So we have to multiply it by 2 hours. So what will happen? This is 200 watt hours. Okay, that's the energy in 2 hours. And express your answers in joules and watt r. This is the watt r answer, 200 watt r. And joules. So we know that 1 watt r is equivalent to 3,600 joules. So if we convert 200 watt r's into joules, we should be able to cancel 1 watt r here. So we're going to multi uh, divide it and multiply it by 3,600 joules. So our answer is... 720 times 10 raised to 3 joules or 720 kilo joules. The kilo, the 10 times 10 raised to 3 is represented by kilo already. Okay? Okay, down to our last example. We have a stone element, stove element draws a 15 ampere when connected to a, to a 240 volt line. How long does it take to consume 60 kilojoules. So we have a current that is 15 amperes. We have a voltage that is 240 volts. And we have an energy that is 60 kilojoules. Or 60 times 10 raised to 3 joules. Okay? Time. How long does it take to consume 60 kilojoules? So we know that from our formula, we have P is equals to W over T. And we are asked for the time. So time is... W over P, okay? We have W, but P is equivalent to IV. So we have 60 times 10 raised to 3 joules over the current 15 amperes multiplied by the voltage 240 volts. So the resulting answer, well, of course, should be in terms of seconds, okay? So we have 16.67 seconds okay so that is all for today thank you so much for listening and i hope you learned something in electrical circuits thank you so much and god bless